do about Samuel Poulin if, and this is a great big if, he comes into training camp and just totally lights it up. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early. Every weekday morning, if you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. Poulin is maybe the one prospect who could come into camp and have you tailing him around with your eyes just to see what's there, to see what might be special, what might emerge, what might be a surprise, a welcome surprise from a young player. And when is the last time you've seen that in this organization? It'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? I mean, think about all of the different pieces and parts to the puzzle that Poulin coming to camp and being like really, really good, would move around. He'd force, I think, a significant disruption, not just to the top six, because he'd have to be on the top six if he's going to make the team, but maybe even to the way the head coach and everybody who's running the Penguins thinks about the state of this team. But first... Of course, he'd have to perform at that level. He'd have to be something that isn't currently expected. And he has that ability. So I'm going to stick with the positive here before I delve into anything else. He's talented. Poulin's talented. Part of what impressed when he first showed up in Pittsburgh in rookie camp a couple of years ago is that he was already filled out, which is rare for an NHL draft pick. You know, they're they're selected at 18 years old and they tend to be, you know, pretty scrawny, undersized, and they don't they don't keep up, you know, <laughs> they're not in NHL shape. They're just not. They're not it's not that's not a dig or a knock on them. They just they haven't been uh, put through the training and the nutrition and everything else that goes in into being an NHL player, and that tends to take actually a year or two for them to figure out. Never mind to start filling out. But Poulin shows up, and he's flying around, and he's got all the energy, and he's got the frame. So you think, well, why not? You know, a team could really use a young guy, and he he did okay offensively at times in scrimmages. I'm trying to stay with the positive here. Can you tell? Uh, And when presented with an opportunity, offensively, he didn't look out of place at all. But then there were the other parts to his game. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. And they, in turn, need your help. Go to pittsburghfoodbank.org to find out how you can make a difference. One more time, it's Pittsburgh Food Bank. Spell all three of those words out, dot org. The thing with Poulin that ended up becoming exposed Not so much in his first camp, but really in the one last summer, is that his 200-foot game, it doesn't need work. It doesn't need refinement or polishing. It needs to be built. I believe it needs to be built from scratch. I don't want to get into labeling him. I don't want to call him Daniel Sprong or anything like that. Sprong just had issues for whatever reason. Bright kid had issues just processing the overall game of hockey, different different quadrants of the ice. I don't want to even 
come close to suggesting that Poulin has something like that, but you got to find out. And what the Penguins have seen to date is a young man who's gifted, who's been playing in the queue. And when you're in Quebec as a junior, as everyone's been able to attest for decades, you play on half the rink if you're a forward. A lot of things have changed in this sport. But the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League continues to produce almost no defensive forwards. There are some, there are some, but there aren't many. It's just not the brand of hockey that's been played there forever. Poulin fits that. And when he came to Pittsburgh, you could see that. There were certain things that the coaches hoped to see from him instinctively and didn't. And what might have been even more concerning was that this also applied to the offensive zone where you could tell that even when he was out there with, well, I mean, he spent some time alongside Sidney Crosby, that he just didn't have a sense or a feel for where he needed to be. Now, again, I'm trying to be really fair here and not, you know, bury this 20-year-old. But he needs not some of this. I believe he needs a lot of this. And I very, very strongly believe that that won't happen for him in Pittsburgh, not just because there are currently seven, count them, seven candidates to play on the fourth line who did spend time in the NHL last season, so it's not going to be an easy roster to crack, but also because Mike Sullivan's not going to play you. You could complain up, down, and sideways about Sullivan's handling of young player from four years ago, young player from last year or whatever, but that's the standard that he holds as a head coach, and he has the right to do that. If he feels a player is going to hurt him, he's not going to play that player. He's not going to go out of his way to set up uh, where the line only comes onto the rink for offensive zone face-offs. You're certainly not going to do that for a kid. When you have offensive zone face-offs, you want Sid's line out there. You know what I mean? You're not trying to hide defensive deficiencies. You're trying to get the best player of his generation additional chances and additional zone time. In Wilkes-Barre, you can do different things. You can take your time. You can build uh, a steady and clear focus on what are the areas that Poulin has to work on and even tell him, listen, don't worry about goals. We know you can score. We've seen that. And if you're going to get goals, get them on the power play. We'll put you on the first unit, whatever. But at five-on-five play, you need to become a Mike Sullivan player. And everything that I just said, by the way, applies to Nathan Legere. I'm not leaving out on purpose. It seems like we can never talk about Poulin without mentioning Legere. Legere is not the same player as Poulin, and Legere has shown some more tendencies toward a 200-foot game than Poulin has, but he's not a completed product either. So it's going to be fun To answer my own hypothetical from the very beginning here, it's going to be fun if one or both does well. Like you'll remember the one game that Legere scored the two goals in the preseason game at PPG Paints Arena, and they were on like blistering shots, and we were all like, whoa, this guy's really good. And afterward, Jim Rutherford even said something like, yeah, we're not ruling out that he'd make the team. No, but he was never going to make the team. He was never going to make the team. To make the team... To make Mike Sullivan's team, you've got to be a Mike Sullivan player. I have no problem with that whatsoever. When we come back, just one question. It's time for Just One Question. That's brought to you by 
Fubo TV, the monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Fubo TV is just 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. And if you want to try it out, you can get through this program a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash DK. One more time to get 15% off your first month, FuboTV.com slash DK. A question comes from Josh Sherkel who asks, What was your favorite Mike Lang catchphrase or all-time favorite call? Josh, I'm going to take the second half of your either-or question, because you did throw an or in there. I almost feel like I'm blending too much in the crowd by identifying Mike and his work just with the catchphrases. I don't feel that's fair. I don't feel that does justice to the caliber, to the quality of his actual play-by-play calling, which I feel is the best I've ever heard in any sport. So I'm going to purposely punt on the catchphrase thing and instead focus on the favorite call. I respect Mike's own choice in this category, and that was Mario Lemieux's unforgettable Game one goal with a few seconds left against the Blackhawks. Huge comeback the Penguins had. Down 4-1, came back in 1-5-4. Ron Francis pulled the puck back to Larry Murphy at the right point. Murph got it through as he always did. Ed Belfort made the save, but it came right out onto 66's blade, and that was the end of that. And Mike just completely, completely nailed it. Out right side, Murphy shooting, same eight rebound on the view. Hey! Shoots and scores! Mario Lemieux and the Penguins lead 5 to 4, and you'd have to be here to believe it. Mario Lemieux has given the Penguins the lead. But my own favorite call, because you didn't specify goal call, will always be the one that he made on May 25th, 1991, from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, where he said, plain and simple, the Stanley Cup has come to the city of Pittsburgh. I felt like that was a simple word choice, obviously, but just perfect for the moment. At the time, for those of you who aren't lifers, At the time, it felt like the franchise not only would never win, but could never win, and in fact was cursed multiple times over, even after the blessing of Mario's arrival and then the other great players who ended up accompanying him. His back went bad. Uh, Paul Coffey's jaw was broken in that playoff. And there were so many different things that were much more serious than that, tragic actually, that happened to the team over its first quarter century of existence, that for Mike to use that terminology, instead of saying Penguins, to identify the championship with the city of Pittsburgh and the Stanley Cup, that championship, that trophy, I felt was just pitch perfect. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. He's on the short end of it tonight. The left wing to Kevin Stevens. Stevens shoots it back to center with five, four, three. Time runs out. The Stanley Cup has come to the city of Pittsburgh. The 1991 Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins.